Wow, wow, yo, yippee, yo, yippee, yay, guys. Pawn number 32, and I'm super excited to be with you guys. As always, we're going to dig down into the love of the community, then talk about what's happening on the markets, resume a bit with which cycle we are standing right now, and more importantly, where are we heading? And then obviously talk about SwissBorg Network. As you guys know, my name is Suarez Frizzell. I'm the proud founder and CEO of SwissBorg, always here to serve you. So market cycle, as you guys noticed, there's some numbers behind and let's try to figure out what is happening. As you guys have probably released for the last six months, we have had, probably we're in a recovery market, right? Where we saw Bitcoin for going from 16,000 to roughly 30,000. But since April 1st, pretty much, we've been really much ranging between 25K and 30K. And before trying to figure out where we're heading, I like to emphasize exactly where are we at and what are we fighting essentially against? Look, probably some people of you have already seen this graph multiple times, but it's always very important to see why Bitcoin was created and more importantly, how it's this playing against an inflation. The inflation hedge that back then was gold and now is the gold 3.0, which is Bitcoin. In 1923, $1 essentially bought 20 Coca-Cola uh, bottles which that means that roughly the dollar itself has lost 95% of its value. And this is exactly the graph that you, you probably all agree with, but people don't realize it. When I talk to a lot of different friends, they're all saying to me, oh, roughly right now I'm really happy because I'm getting 7% in my bank with US tre treasury bills. And when you realize that the inflation is higher than that, you're actually not making money, you're actually losing money. And that's why it's always very important to be in the market. Another thing to mention as well is how early we're at still at this stage in crypto, right? If you compare us to the internet's adoption rate, we're only in the late 90s. So there's much more to be brought into it. And in terms of crypto users, you know, we're roughly between 100 and 200 million right now. So imagine the amount of people that will fortunately get into crypto thanks to SwissBorg and other cool applications. Now, if you looked at the different cycles that we've lived through essentially uh, in crypto, we went through four main cycles. The first one, which was to, from 2010, let's say, to 2013, it was really the debut. It was really the, the, really the first start where very few amount of people were able to get into crypto. Mainly people who were doing that were video game players. Obviously, there was Silk Road as well. Um, but there was essentially people that wanted to create a new dream, a new paradigm to really empower people by the community, right? Uh, people for the community. Uh, and what you see very clearly here is that it started with obviously a massive drawdown because in 2010, it just went very well and thing went to the moon, but then it corrected massively. And this was the first crypto bear, a very short one, but it, it did go through. And then eventually what you see is that you have a pre-bull, a first bull, and a second bull. And that has essentially brought Bitcoin from few cents to more than few dollars. Then again in 2014, this was a bit slightly different because it came from not only the cycle itself, there was obviously mongogs happening there. It brought for essentially, you know, Bitcoin from $1,000 to eventually 250 where people didn't believe in it anymore. But then... They had the pre-bull again, uh, where essentially a lot of great things happened, like for example, Ethereum's ICO and how Web3 was potentially going to be something new. And then the main catalyst happened in 2017, when you saw more adoption, more importantly, the ISO era, right? And this is really what has brought essentially the massive bull run. Then the crypto bear uh, again, where essentially 2018 was really crypto winter. A lot of companies unfortunately went bankrupt. It was the end, everyone was extremely pessimistic. Then 2019, the transition period, the pre-bull as we can mention it. And then 2020 came essentially the DeFi summer where new applications was brought. And 2021 was the Furic year where essentially the whole accumulation, a whole lot of different countries and people got into crypto uh, for uh, the use and the trading out of it and NFTs and different things. So. What does this happen now to the four cycle, which we are in right now? Right now we're in 2022. And in 2022, I um, mean 2023, but in 2022, we saw this massive bubble burst. And this massive bubble that burst, it really hurted a lot of different companies and a lot of different people 
around the world. We saw from 3AC to FTX and a lot of different other things that blew up and that brought the market to in doubts again. But 2023, we saw hope again. We saw the light and we saw new things that are coming in. And, and this is really the pre-bull, right? We're, we're out of this crypto winter now, so the last six, seven, seven months. Now we're in this, this, this the transition period that will bring to the probably the next first bull and then to the second bull. And, and when you think about this, which is quite interesting, is that it goes very well with the halving as well. And, and, and this is the question we should be asking is, what is going to be the next catalysts? that will bring, will, will take the first bull to, to that crazy euphoric second bull, right? Is it just the halving itself? I don't think it's enough. It's a good pretext to start the first bull, which will happen late Q1 next year. Uh, then there's obviously something that will be massive from the financial side is when the ETF will happen. You know, we thought about it's going to happen in 2016, then 17, 18, 19, 20. So this, this, you know, song has been playing on and on and on, but now we know that essentially BlackRock is coming in with the ETF. They took a 12% uh, stake into MicroStrategy, which essentially is indirect uh, buying Bitcoin itself. Vanguard and everyone else is going to play this game. And most probably this will lead at least uh, Bitcoin to some, some a new traction in terms of institutional players like endowments, banks, and others, but as well to private clients, which are essentially all different people in different private banks. And then as well at the end, retail people that don't want to go into Swissborg, to Coinbase, or different platforms, and just want to have an exposure to Bitcoin itself. So this is definitely one of the juicy stories. I think that uh, the third story that would go to this first big bull is as well the facts about the the Fed and 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 essentially all the central banks have played quite well the game against inflation. The economy is not doing too well, of course, with these rates that are that high. So they're still not investing into risky assets. Most institutional users, but I think that as soon as uh, maybe the end of the year will happen, we'll start cutting back essentially rates. And will that happen? Is that people will go back into stocks and then more high risk? type of investment. So that could be the third catalyst that will really work. And the fourth one, which is the dreaming one, which I think will happen, is that we will have some kill applications that will happen that will bring a lot of a lot of traction into Web3, which is social fi. We talked about this many times, like for example, X with Twitter is bringing a lot of new ways that peer-to-peer culture is happening, but as well, maybe some other different platforms that I heard that in Alpha Opportunity is going to happen. So let's get tuned for that. And of course, GameFi. Uh, and I know Xbox is about to release some new things regarding that. And there's so many other cool games that will bring people, not essentially just to mine and play. I mean, not just to mine and make money, but really to play, enjoy, and build essentially their reputation, identities, and hopefully their wealth into Web3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think that right now we're in this pre-bull. I think that the first bull will happen sooner or later and that between 24 and 25 will be the, the sweet moment that we're all waiting for. Community members and burgers, please remind yourself that uh, Thursday there is an apéro uh, at the office. So you're all welcome to join us. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, so looking forward to see you guys. Talking about community members, obviously this will be a, this is a great invitation for you guys to apply to any of these jobs, which is business data analysts. We're looking for software engineers uh, who has experience in data and as well as senior product designer. So if you have any of these skills, if you have people in your network that would love to join the team and love to join the mission, please recommend them. Community member of the week is not a person, it's essentially a group of person. Uh, that are not hidden and easy to find, but We Are Swissborg is an association that has been created in Switzerland that it's owned by the community and it's really in order to promote Swissborg, to help Swissborg to grow, but more importantly to realize its mission, which is financial freedom, right? So this is something that uh, has, has is really the genesis of it. It's really something I think that's going to have a huge impact in the local communities. Because this is really, I think, so the thing that could make the big difference between Swissborg and Coinbase and Binance, all of that is always this community approach. And the community approach 
it's great to have here this virtual connection, but it's even better when you have that high five, that hug, or that beer together and face to face. So We're Swissborg is really all about that. You should probably be following it on Twitter, join the association as well as an active member. Uh, one of the big steps going forward is we had a kickoff meeting uh, where we were, where Swissboard will try to help to bring content and try to organize whatever we could in order to make the association easier. It's completely uh, free of them, but we're organizing uh, right now different content uh, that's around the masterclass from Financial Freedom, told away how to build essentially uh, your wealth. So this is something that uh, we are cooking right now. I, I hope that uh, whenever we release, we'll have many members that would like to develop these local chapters around Europe or around the world itself, if you guys believe in it. And to start to grow essentially a monthly chapters where you guys could gather, but not gather just to have fun and share, share, share common stories, but really to get to be better at what you guys love the most, uh, which is building wealth. So I think so this is something that I really think will have an impact on you know yourself, on the communities that you you belong to, and hopefully, uh, yeah, bring a lot of good momentum to to the network itself. So if you guys are interested, we'll have a I think so virtual webinar. We'll start hopefully uh, by early September with all the different content, all the different chapters, and uh, it's going to be really cool. So looking forward for you guys, and uh, we'll share how to join the webinar. Uh, Gordon is the CHSB update. Uh, so as you guys have realized last time, we have added a new utility, which was to burn on top of burning. Uh, but do you guys have any other ideas? So here you could scan this QR code and hopefully bring something new to the table, which would be awesome. And uh, there's some ideas there, like for DCA within CHSB giveaway, advertising boosts, any idea that you guys feel would benefit our community members, just go for it. Please note that you only have one week uh, for uh, this Typhorn to fill it up. So it's your journey, it's your job. So make sure that you come up with great ideas. <laughs> Community index updates. Uh, so it's not a huge update. There's some ponderation that has a little bit sh short. So there's some weighting that's no more for the sustainable score. We're trying always to make ways that it brings something better to the community. Sustainable score is really based on the different layers and the revenues and cost revenues that we're trying to bring to Swissborg. So essentially, it's a way to, again, know if Swissborg is going well, it's a healthy uh, week, or it's not a healthy week prior to the other one. See how progression is happening. Obviously, this is an important score that defines as well the allocation that's going uh, to the protect and choose. Uh, so I hope you guys like the new one. Uh, it hasn't really changed. It's just more the weighting itself. Chart of the week, this is a funny one, it's about wealth management and it's about studies about is there a different way of building their your wealth when you're 18 to 4, 24, 25 to 39, 40 to 59 and 16 plus? Well, after looking at all the peer groups of active users, over 100,000 thousand people, there's no difference. <laughs> Rather 18 or over 60. You pretty much have a very similar portfolio, uh, which is uh, quite quite interesting. Uh, maybe there's a little bit less of altcoins when you're a bit older, probably because they haven't heard about it or the fact that they're not interested in something new. They just want to go on something that already has a more substantial proof of case, uh, which is there. If not, what you could see as well is that if you're a boomer in some way, well, you have a bigger position in Bitcoin. Again, that, that, that's the correlation of having less altcoins, which makes sense. But if not, pretty much it is in essentially pretty much the same thing. So it's, there's two things about this. Is rather uh, the people that are in the young cohort are extremely smart how to build wealth or, or we are all at the same level in some age and where, regardless of your age in crypto, we always think the same way to diversify its risk to build up uh, a portfolio that looks the best in this case. I think so going forward, what I'd like to see is maybe maybe more about the coins itself and the altcoins uh, to see if there's different, like maybe more mem coins for younger people or not. Uh, anyways, all in all, it seems that people are doing the right job, at least on the asset allocation side. CHSB and some data, pretty much not quite stable in this last week. 
Only 219 new premiums from last week, which is not great. We'll try to get to that 500, uh, 350 usually. So um, yeah, things are not too great, which brings us to the community index. You cast your score, make it if we are right or not. Unfortunately, 3.8, the sustainability score has not done quite well. The CHSB has grown a bit, app activity too, uh, but unfortunately on the other side, it's not doing too great. Uh, CHSV, there's a lot of factor driving through Hobi. Recently, I know a lot of people are asking me this question, why Hobi? Well, Hobi is not us. Uh, our token is traded on different platforms and I don't know why uh, there's quite a big demand of trading uh, through Hobi. Is it themselves? I doubt it. It's probably maybe users that are, don't have access to Swissborg app that want to get in uh, and the ride uh, <laughs> most probably. Guys, another week. I hope you guys enjoyed last week powwow, which was really about the ICO era and how we uh, got to where we are today. Uh, this powwow today was really to focus really more on the cycle, the macro outlook. Hopefully this have give you some information to understand where we at and how to start building your wealth in a better way. Maybe next week we'll have some uh, more tips regarding trading. Uh, this could be something that could help you guys to, to not only DCA, but as well build some momentum and maybe uh, give a way so that you could build your wealth in a, in a better journey. I, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. As always, uh, be wealthy, be healthy, love our CHSB and our equity. Take care, guys. Bye. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. It's a, an amazing fiat gateway.